Hey folks, thanks for stopping by the channel. Um, the other day I did a video on some 1911s, a uh, little video response for 23 Mr. Cowboy. At the end of the video, we're talking about 45 ACPs. I decided to drop a Tommy gun on the table and said I was going to go shooting. Well, I did. Now it's time to clean it up. What you're looking at here is a 1927A1 version of the Tommy gun, and it is an SBR, registered SBR. This particular model is uh, manufactured by Auto Ordnance. It's not an original Tommy, which would be beautiful because it would be worth a boatload of money. Um, but it's, it's really a nice piece of American history. There's no question about it. The, the Tommy gun, synonymous with gangsters. You see them in all the World War II videos of the, the films like Saving Private Ryan and Band of Brothers. Um, John T. Thompson developed this gun late during World War I. They needed something to be able to go into the trenches. And they developed this gun, had some nicknames, the Trench Broom, say the Trench Sweeper, or even the famous Chicago Typewriter. That came in late um, after World War I. Well, by the time they'd worked out all the bugs, the war was over. So this thing actually went to the commercial market back in the day when you could own a machine gun before our government became so uptight and they took that right away from us. Anyways, um, the Tommy gun actually, when it went to the civilian market, went for $200. Now, today, that seems like a drop in the hat, but believe it or not, a brand new Ford back at that time after World War I, was $400. To just give you a price comparison, so it was a pretty beefy piece of equipment. Obviously, it was made famous by all the gangsters like John Dillon and uh, uh, Al Capone, all those guys. Of course, it got the, uh, the nickname as Chicago Typewriter. But the gun officially saw a service in the United States military from 1938 to 1971. It actually went that far into the United States service. Uh, offered in 20, 30, and 50 round magazines or a 50 round drum. Uh, rate of fire, depending on the model, was between 600 and 1500 rounds per minute, uh, depending on the model. It's a 45 ACP, so it only has about 935 feet per second in velocity. It's a big piece of lead, but listen, the effective range for this gun is only 50 meters or 160 feet. So believe it or not, a lot of the times that these guys were firing during the war, during World War II, even if it did hit the enemy, by the time it actually had traveled from the shooter to the victim, it had lost so much penetrating velocity that there's been reports, especially you know Japanese uh, during some of the island wars, that they were getting hit with the 45 ACP was actually bouncing off them. It's great gun. I mean, great round 45 ACP if you're close. But if you're not close, it's no good. Anyways, uh, non-commissioned officers like corporals and sergeants or anyone that was higher ranking actually would hold this gun or be assigned this gun. But uh, we're going to do a quick field strip of the gun just to break it down. And I'm going to clean it, but I'm not going to bore you with it. This has the detachable stock model on it. So the stock comes off. What we're going to do so we don't bang up the wood is we're going to push it over here. And then I'm going to take off my stock piece. Now this, believe it or not, is a gun that we also use for reenacting. You can put a, you know, um, a blank adapter on it, which we do. Uh, but it's it's semi-auto. Okay, there's the two pieces off the two wood. Now we get the gun, just basic design here. Now there's a pin right here. We're going to depress the pin. The rear block, we're going to move the trigger assembly all the way to the rear and it's going to stop. It's not going to go any further than this. That pin that I depressed here, I now have to depress it again and get it past the trigger mechanism. So pull the trigger again, comes to the rear, and then what I'm going to do is take a screwdriver, I'm going to put it right inside here, and I'm going to pull the trigger, push that pin up, and then we're going to slide it off completely. So now the lower receiver is, is off. This back pin here, you have to depress that pin in order to pull a receiver off the upper. Okay. So now we've stripped the upper from the lower. Don't need the lower. Now, the bolt system is a double recoil buffered bolt system. Now, if you look at some of the guns that are being manufactured today, uh, there's the recoil spring for the firing pin right here in the center. 
And then you have the bolt double recoil. Two reasons for the double recoil. Stabilizes the block itself, and also because it's a heavy piece of you know, steel, machine steel, the double recoil spring would actually help the bolt go back into battery, or would go back into a firing mode. So anyways, what we're going to do now is we're going to remove the buffer pad, and in order to remove the buffer pad, we're going to take this screwdriver here, and we're going to push this forward, freeing up the buffer pad, pull the buffer pad out, Double recoil guide rod system. That's the firing pin spring. And the retaining pin, which would actually hold the firing pin spring um, steady inside the upper receiver so it wouldn't bind. Flip the unit over, pull it back. Charging handle out, and the bolt system out. And that's the gun right there. So. That's the firing pin block. This is the upper. This is the main main unit, uh, the carrier, and the firing pin is right here in the center. So that's it torn apart. I'm gonna clean it up and I'll throw it back together again. I'm not gonna bore you with me cleaning it, but uh, yeah, hopefully you're enjoying what you're seeing right now. I'll get back to you in a second. <laughs> all right we're all done cleaning this puppy up so now it's time to put it back together again um the one thing when during world war ii is they didn't really have a synthetic oil you know like hoppies or any type of lubricant they actually were using a 30 weight oil uh let's face it it's a piece of machinery and 30 weight oil would actually pass as a good lubricant but to give you an idea this is what they'd have to do to strip the gun down and clean it so what we're going to do is the block's been cleaned, the breech block, firing pin's been cleaned, recoil guide rods, and the dual spring. So what we're going to do is just apply a little lubrication here to the inner rails. Going to drop in the block. Put a secondary drop of oil on the inside here and here. Nice, like butter. Okay. Firing pin, firing pin guide. It's kind of like a recoil guide rod spring. So you just want to, the recoil guide rod, just put a little oil on it. Put the spring in it. Goes in the back area. Locks into place. Now this is also a recoil guide. It's a dual recoil guide. So once again, a little oil on it. Spread out evenly so you can see it and you can feel it. Install the two springs. No, nope, I forgot something. My bad. Charging handle back in. That's it. two recoil guide rods back in. Well, the recoil springs, I keep saying guide rods because I'm so used to modernized firearms. Drops that into place. Put the buffer back in. Drop the buffer back into place. Now, on the receiver, What's nice about you know some of the firearms, any firearms, it's going to show you wear marks. So you can see here on the receiver where the bolt rides. So you know you're going to need to lubricate it right there. So your choice is you can lubricate the bolt or you can lubricate the receiver. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lubricate nice bead of lubrication on the receiver. These guns like to run wet, so don't be afraid to apply a good amount of lubrication on there. You can't over lubricate these guns. It's not like it's a Glock. So get that into place. Gun back into place. 
slam it forward, and the retaining pin in the rear of the upper receiver will hold it back into place. Function check, and that's it. So basically, that's the 1927A1 Tommy gun broken down for you. Quick little demonstration. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of guys out there. You've seen the videos with shooting a full auto version of this. That was really awesome and cool. Uh, 50 round drums. Uh, 50 rounds in 4 seconds. Talk about a waste of ammo. <laughs> but it was fun as hell. Alright guys, I appreciate it. And have yourself a good weekend and, or a good day. And I'll catch you soon. Bye. There's no way in hell I was going to go home without throwing 50 rounds downrange with this. Ha! You shot a tree down! <laughs> wow, nice technique. I'm impressed. He shot that, he shot that tree right down. <laughs>